Good evening. This is a quasi-virtual meeting of the North End of the Board of Health. It's uh, Thursday, May 13th, a little after 7, 7 o'clock. Um, I'm Joe McCarthy, the Board Chairman, and we have a quorum. Uh, so before I go to the uh, Governor's comment on virtual meetings, I just want to go over who is here right now in the department and in the board. Let me start with the board first. To my right is Dr. Max Tilson. Uh, virtually tied in right now. Pat? Present. Are you there? That's, that's Pat Scanlon. He's the town doctor. Michelle Davis? I'm here. Daphne? That's here. Daphne, Daphne Lefort? Okay. Uh, so that is everyone on the board, and uh, the meeting is approved, and it's called to order. Uh, again, before I go to the uh, governor's uh, uh, comments on virtual meetings, uh, I, I want to uh, talk about who else is with us right now. Uh, over there, that's Brian Lagrasse. He's the director of the Department of Health, and also from the department, several other people are tied in right now. Uh, Callan Ibbotson, town nurse. Are you there, Callan? Yes. Good evening. And also, also uh, Steve Casey. He's the, uh, the the inspector. Stevie, with us tonight? Yep, I'm here. And finally, we have T Tony Wolferden. She's sitting in the back, and she's the administrative assistant. The governor's comments on virtual meetings, and as I said, this is a quasi-virtual meeting, and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. And hopefully this will be the last meeting as such we will have that is considered to be virtual or quasi-virtual. But the governor's, the governor's comment, which has to be read at all board meetings throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law in the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strip limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the North Andover Board of Health will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information in the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with the right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website at www.northandoverma.gov. For this meeting, members of the public who wish, wish to watch may do so on their television by turning to Comcast 8 or Verizon Channel 26 or online at www.northandovercam.org. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, and every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately assess the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the Town of North Andover website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. If the public would like to participate in public hearings, please email your question comments prior to or during the meeting to blagrass at northendofma.gov. That is our director. It's B-L-A-G-R-A-S-S-E at northendofma.gov. The question comment will be read during the proceedings and responded to accordingly. Uh, so the first order of business is the Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the, to the flag to the of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, I said this is a quasi-virtual meeting. Uh, the reason is that the public at this time cannot walk in and listen to or participate at the meeting. Brian, we do hope that by our next meeting that will change? I hope so. Okay, okay, so this is the last meeting as such. 
Uh, but it's nice to be back because we've been virtually virtual all, all year with the exception of uh, last month, uh, I believe. Mask. The CDC announced today that inside and outside, with few exceptions, people no longer have to wear masks. That's a guideline. If they're fully so the, vaccinated. Excuse me? If they've been fully vaccinated. If they've been fully vaccinated, right. exactly. So the question is, uh, why are we wearing masks? Well, it's just a matter of timing. The CDC just announced that, mm -hmm. and uh, it hasn't filtered down to the state, and we do what the state tells us to do in our town. So once again, if you're fully vaccinated, uh, and that's considered to be two weeks after your second shot, if you had a Moderna or a Pfizer shot, or two weeks after the single Johnson Johnson shot, you are considered to be fully vaccinated. And a reason that the CDC is doing it right now is it's, it's, it's to encourage those who have not been vaccinated to be vaccinated. Because if you have to wear a mask and you're fully vaccinated, it's, it's like an oxymoron. It just doesn't make sense to so many of us. Knowing full well that if you're fully vaccinated, uh, the last, the latest number that I read is one out of 12,000 people that have been fully vaccinated can still come down with the virus. But it's a mild case. They are not hospitalized and they do not die. Uh, so the CDC saying no more mask if you're fully vaccinated. That is terrific. Okay, moving on. Uh, approval of the minute, minutes of the meeting um, uh, from um, March 25th, 2021. Michelle? Is Michelle Davis there? Oh, we seem to. I am. Okay. Sorry. Uh, have you reviewed the minutes of the meeting? <laughs> uh, excuse, excuse I'm me? trying to remember if I did. Okay, then we'll leave that on hold at this particular time. No problem at all. <laughs> okay, public hearing. Uh, this is on the temporary operations of the Thomas Brothers uh, facility here in North Andover. Uh, uh, Jeff uh, Thompson, excuse me, the Thompson Brothers. Jeff Thompson is here to talk about that. But before I turn it over to Jeff, I, I, if, if you can give us, Brian, a quick outline of what this is all about and, 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 and take it from there, and then you can comment on it further. Sure. Um, obviously, a year ago, over a year ago, there was a major fire that destroyed the building and destroyed the operations. They did get temporary approval from the board uh, after that happened to do limited work outside while they reconstructed to keep them operational. Um, while that was going on and then construction of the new building was taking place, there was another small fire in one of the concrete bays due to some welding work that was being done by one of the subcontractors. So they had to shut down again. Um, I, me and you met with uh, Jeff on site, took a look at what they were doing in the operations and what they wanted to do. Jeff submitted a letter outlining parameters that they wanted to operate under. And we gave them verbal approval and I followed up with an email at the time, but he had to go through and also get approvals from DEP, Building and Fire Department to get operational uh, approvals from them as well. Uh, we're here for an update from Jeff. This would just be the official board vote uh, after the fact but I'm, I invited Jeff here to talk about what's going on, where they're at in the process, and what's going on with, with the operations. Right now, we, um, sprinkler company is on site uh, installing the sprinkler system. They're a third of the way through uh, into the cent section, uh, the center section where the processing equipment are, where you've been on site. They did the, the door section, the first section, all the way to the west, okay. um, center section next, and then they'll probably get on the far end. Uh, once the sprinkler system and the fire control, fire control will be in the building on uh, this Thursday, upcoming Thursday, and they'll start to get that installed. So uh, fire alarms, heat detectors, smoke detectors, that'll all be getting installed. The hydrant that the uh, fire department was looking for on the back side of the property has been installed, uh, I believe, that uh, all the testing for that has been uh, forwarded over to the uh, water department. Uh, so that's been completed. 
So we should be all set there. So now we have a working fire hydrant on the back side, uh, the airport side of the building, mm -hmm. one out in front of the building. Okay. Uh, when the limited operations uh, will continue not to happen until sprinkler system is installed yep. and the uh, fire control system is installed. Okay. And that's going to be done, like you said. They're working not as fast as we would like, but they are okay. working. Isn't that always the case? When do you hope <laughs> be opened full uh, it's it, it really is down to the sprinkling contractors uh, as, as quick as they can get it up uh, we're ready to we're ready to get going immediately as soon as they're done uh, unfortunately I'm, I'm, I'm thinking they're another two to three weeks away so at this time you have uh, an approval to operate on a limited basis and the purpose of this meeting right now is to talk about it and vote for such approval because it's only on an interim basis. Correct me if I'm mistaken. Yes, but he doesn't have approvals from other departments mm -hmm. or DEP to operate yet, mm -hmm. um, but he's in the process of getting that. And once the sprinklers are up and the fire hydrant is live and you have your DEP approvals, you'll be able to operate inside the building, correct? Yes. Okay. But first he needs our approval. Yes. Yep. Okay. Are there any questions for those that are no, tied in remotely? No, the DEP, I believe, is still fine with uh, temporary operations, but they're, oh, okay. they're more um, that we need to get the sprinkler system and the fire control yes. system. Yes, yeah, because it's the site modification through DEP that they're issuing the approvals for for that. Yes. that. That approval, I think that's still ongoing. I think it's part of uh, Governor Baker's extensions of all permits. Okay. So we were that was already been approved, so I think that's been told. Gotcha. But it's more uh, town and the uh, town departments. Okay. okay. Are there any questions from any of the members of the uh, of the board? Because if not, we need a motion to approve the uh, the, the interim operation. Yeah, temporary operations. Right. Yeah, I'll motion to approve. You make a motion to yeah. approve? Yeah. I mean, you, you guys, you guys have been involved with this as a temporary issue, as a temporary issue up to this point, right? So this yes. is. Formalizing what you guys have already done. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And Brian's good. You're good with that too. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, is there a second to this motion? Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded for the interim uh, operation of this facility. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. You have the operation on an interim basis. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff, before you go, because you really provide a valued service to our community. I've been there, as you know, many, many times. I've been heavily involved, not in your operation, but the waste energy operation. Uh, in fact, uh, going back 30 years ago, I managed the Willowbrid, started up and managed the Willowbrid plant that's adjacent to your plant. And that Willowbrid plant takes in 1,500 tons a day of trash from North End of many other communities, and, and with that generates steam and electricity. So it provides a valued service to our community, as do you. So can you talk a little bit about the service you, you provide? Because it's unknown to so many in our community. Well, not just the uh, giving uh, local residents and small contractors a place to bring construction and demolition material. Uh, North Andover residents are charged based on the weight. Every other person or company that comes in, there's a minimum charge, $75, doesn't matter what you bring in, it's prorated. North Andover residents pay eight cents a pound, doesn't matter if you bring in 100 pounds, 1,000 pounds, 5,000 pounds, it's eight cents a pound, exactly what you weigh. Everybody else pays significantly more. Uh, there are minimum charges for non-residents of North Andover. Uh, North Andover residents are free to drop off metal, uh, any scrap that they have. We don't charge. We don't charge anybody. We take in the, a lot of the services that were over at the former DPW yard, uh, electronics, uh, propane tanks. We host the hazardous waste for the town uh, so that it's not over at the DPW site twice a year. Uh, it, it's done at our location uh, because it, 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 it's, more, it's better set up for it. Uh, the last one was uh, greatly attended by uh, residents of the town. 
the Clean Harbor's uh, crew was there right up until one o'clock. Next one I don't think is until October and I should know the date off the top of my head. Uh, we also donate the weekly recycling, uh, single stream recycling for the town uh, and have done so since the facility's been uh, in operation. Uh, so that's every single week to all the residences in the town at no charge to the town. And it is, to say the least, a very impressive uh, operation. You've done a, we try. a, a good job. We try. Uh, there has been some setbacks. Um, fires, unfortunately, are not unique in this, uh, this business and industry. But uh, you know, keep up the good work, because you're really providing a valued service to our community. It's getting I know, even more difficult. I know I've been there many, many times, because I own a small farm here in North Andover, and I always have junk to get There's rid of. always something. And, uh, yeah, yeah, always. OK. Uh, anything else? Any other comments to Jeff while he's here? From those that are tied in virtually or uh, here right now? Good enough. Great. We thank you and thank have a you. good evening. Have yourself a good Thanks, night, Jeff. Thanks. Take care. Okay, moving on to communications, announcement, and uh, discussions. And Brian, I imagine you have a lot to talk about. <laughs> um, I always have a little bit to talk about. Uh, so, all right, start off by saying good evening. Good to see you guys again in person, which is always a nice thing. Um, overall, things have been looking really good the last few weeks since our last meeting. Um, our numbers have been trending down steadily. Uh, vaccinations are up. Restrictions are being rolled back. Um, and we're seeing single-digit case counts now, which is a fantastic thing because we were in the high range over the winter. After the holidays, we're seeing 30, 40 a day. Now we're down two, three, five, six. Um, so our numbers have really plummeted, which is a great thing to say. Uh, right now we currently have 35 total cases in town. Uh, six are from higher education. Uh, Merrimack is having their graduation uh, this weekend. So Merrimack is closing up shop for the most part. Uh, I think we only had like three cases yesterday. So that, that's where we're at and that's what we're seeing. Um, Mass in general is also seeing no, uh, lower numbers as well. I think this week on Tuesday there was 446 across the state and 626 on Wednesday. Uh, they didn't have the numbers before the meeting tonight for uh, today's numbers. Um, 428 patients are in the hospital for COVID-19, which is also really low. We're looking at a 1.25% positivity rate across the state and North Andover is at 0.73 which is below 1%, which is awesome. Um, vaccinations, like I said, are moving along. The mass vaccination sites across the state are still doing good numbers. Um, they have tapered off a little bit over the past couple of weeks once the initial rush had kind of gone through and did the, uh, the all the populations first and the first responders and all the healthcare workers. And then we went to the general population. Um, and Mass has done 3.1 million people fully vaccinated. Obviously, there is more that still have one dose that need to get their second dose. Um, and our numbers are going up. So they break it down into age groups across the state. And last week, 75 and over, 93% of that population had received at least one dose. We're up to 94% this week. So over the next couple of weeks, as that, those, uh, those people get their second doses, those age groups will be completely fully vaccinated at 94% as of today. Uh, 65 to 74, last week was at 90%. We're up to 91 now, so it's slowly creeping up. Um, 50 to 64 last week was 78%. Now we're at 80%. 30 to 49 was at 70. Now we're at 73. And then 20 to 29 was at 57. Now we're at 62. A little bit of a jump there. And then 0 to 19 was at 12%. And now we're up to 14%. Um, so those, the lower age groups are definitely getting more vaccinations, which is good. Um, we are uh, at 60% right now in North Andover totally vaccinated, which is a really good number. Um, so like I said, we've seen that curve level off, but it's still increasing. We want to get the word out there. We did some, uh, send out some information last week on locations at clinics and vaccine information. Hopefully that helps people get things moving along a little bit. Um, we just opened up to 16 to uh, 18 with the Moderna 
and the state also just opened up from 12 to 15 for uh, the middle school populations. We do have clinics scheduled next week at the high school and the middle school. Caroline and uh, the school department worked really hard on getting this taken care of and they have it planned and up and running as of Monday. The middle school is done and Friday the high school is getting their first uh, shots done. So there's close to 500 middle schoolers signed up and a couple hundred high schoolers signed up. Our high school has seen a large jump in vaccinations, which is really good. Um, so getting those age groups will be a really good thing moving forward and getting the younger kids protected and safe, which also in turn protects their parents and their grandparents. Um, so as we continue, restrictions are being lifted, capacities are being increasing. Um, we did meet with the senior center staff today about adding on more programs and um, Lai is looking to expand her programming and uh, be able to open up more, have more seniors in and do more activities. So that's a really good thing. They've been really um, wanting to get back into the swing of things over there and have their seniors and their uh, residents come in and get to stop being so isolated. Um, I'll let Steve talk about some of the recent changes in terms of gatherings and sports and things like that. He's been monitoring and helping us out with that for uh, the last year, which is great. So Steve, you're up. All right. How's it going, everyone? Um, yeah, as Brian said, there were some changes to the um, different restrictions in place for different sector specific areas. Um, as everyone knows, estimate of April 30th, the governor basically went back to the open face covering rule, which um, just entails that if you're outdoors and you can socially distance, you don't need to wear the face covering. Um, other areas of the Face covering guidance still apply, so if you're indoors, uh, for example, like going into a retail business, you still should be wearing them, but um, if you're outside and able to socially distance, you don't have to anymore. Um, I've implemented on May 10th, there were a lot of uh, sector-specific areas that were updated. Um, instead of going into the fine little details of every single one, um, just some of the areas that were changed were indoor and outdoor events, um, restaurants, retail spaces, theater and performance venues and large capacity venues. A lot of, like I said, the uh, changes were either minor or just um, just very limited to each area. So restaurants, there was some cleaning and disinfecting changes. Um, you can now allow singing indoors for performances at restaurants um, and large capacity venues. It was increased from 12% capacity to 25. They put out new pool guidance for public and semi-public pools. So with pool season around the corner and a lot of them reaching out and getting permitted, I've been trying to do my best to update uh, the certified pool operators and property managers on those. Uh, there was some changes to the youth and amateur sports guidance as well. Some of that had to do with kind of aligning the mask guidance for spectators and then also loosening that in some areas depending on the sport and the risk category it fell into. They also eliminated some areas of what they call the sector-specific guidance um, and just have these areas follow what they call sector not addressed, um, which in layman's terms is almost just like general guidance for COVID as far as uh, hand washing, mask use, and things like that. Um, I think what grabbed everyone's attention was when they announced that come May 29th, there's a bigger changes coming. So May 29th, um, and again, this is subject to public health and vaccination data, Gatherings, you can go up to 200 people indoors and 250 people outdoors for event venues, public settings and private settings. Restaurants, um, you don't have to order food when you want to get an alcoholic beverage. Um, and they're going to increase the table limit from six people to 10 people. They're allowing street festivals, parades, and agricultural festivals to have 50% capacity after they submit safety plans to local board of health. And um, almost like a, in the uh, end in sight moment, uh, they announced. August 1st, they're aiming to lift industry restrictions and uh, increase capacity back in uh, different areas to 100%. Um, again, as I noted, all these are subject to public health and vaccination data. I'm hoping that means that if the trends that were more increases or continues, I should say, that um, all these will come sooner, but that's, uh, that's to be seen. And then uh, just quickly, as far as the day stuff goes, um, a lot of the COVID stuff, on our end has actually died down, at least um, from what I'm seeing. We're not really getting complaints anymore, which is nice about things like mask use or different complaints about areas of sector-specific guidance. 
Um, this being said, though, unfortunately, a lot of the uh, normal stuff we, we did before COVID is really coming full swing. Like I mentioned, pool season is around the corner, and um, a lot of my next week is with uh, pool inspections. Our septic inspections are going to be pretty busy this summer. Um, a couple of more planned to move for restaurants in town. And um, then just in general, just trying to continue providing guide, uh, guidance up to the general public and to the business. Um, and then we also had um, a part-time employee start um, to the employer of plastic. Um, and I'm hoping that she'll be able to come in and really help us out a lot with these inspections. She's going to be over a few months. That's all I have. Steve, that was very good. Uh, I heard uh, we heard most everything you had to say. Uh, 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 I, I hope that people that listen in uh, heard most of what you said too, because you you really provided some uh, some some good some detailed information. Uh, do we have any restaurants in North Andover that are shut down right now? Shut down in terms um, of shut down because of the uh, pandemic. Mean, Go ahead, Steve. So we, as far as closing, like how many go? Um, I think I noted some at the past meeting, but I, to my knowledge, we haven't had any new We had um, Steve, one. You're, you're breaking up a little bit. Uh, I'm just wondering how close uh, you sorry, are. Is it echoing? Yeah, yeah. you're uh, getting a little muffled there yeah. for a second. Oh, uh, is, is this better? That's yep. better, Steve, yeah. Okay, sorry, I was on speaker. Um, we don't have anywhere that I know of recently that's closed permanently. We have a couple places that are either coming in and not open yet, or one restaurant that transferred ownership and they're in the process of pulling permits. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, no restaurants have shut down due to COVID. Obviously they were closed for a few months and then we were allowed to reopen. Um, late last spring but nobody has closed because of the pandemic there are a few places fud rockers did close i don't know if that was uh, planned prior to covid but they closed fairly early uh, there is a new restaurant moving into that location oh uh, we have had some changes in ownership in some of the restaurants um, one of the restaurants that left was due to the gas issues and then a water main break um, over in the messina's plaza but for all said and done after the past year um, Surprisingly, they fared out somewhat well, and they're still here, which is really good. Okay. Questions to Steve? Thank you, Steve. Brian? All right. Going to have uh, Carolyn talk for a couple minutes on uh, public health nursing. And before she Thanks. does, um, Carolyn was, uh, was uh, she's the town employee of the year, Carolyn, so... She's done a good job. Thanks. Kudos. Yes. <laughs> ahead, it sounds Carl. like I'm going to echo too, so I apologize in advance. No, you're good. Okay. I'm just going to turn myself down so I don't have to hear myself <laughs> talk. Um, so basically, uh, like Brian and Steve said, COVID has kind of slowed down as far as contact tracing. Um, once our vaccine has stopped and we weren't doing clinics, um, we started trying to take over some of the contact tracing again, especially for any you know, school related cases. Um, and so we have seen, you know, a little bit of volume, um, not necessarily with the schools, but like with daycares and, um, and just, you know, um, a couple of things here and there, but it really has been um, much more manageable than it was in months past. Um, like Brian said, we started working with uh, Pelmed Pharmacy, Cheryl Barzak and I um, were, had met with them last week um, and started trying to collaborate with them to run some clinics at the high school and the middle school in anticipation of the Pfizer vaccine getting approved for 12 to 14. So um, we had finalized some dates and then um, we have our first clinic on Monday, the 17th at the middle school, and our first clinic on Friday, the 21st at the high school. We have about 450 middle schoolers signed up and about 175 high schoolers signed up. We did already have a, a large portion of the high school 
population um, are to get vaccinated. So, um, you know, and they still have more time to, to sign up. Um, so that's been exciting. And um, the school nurses have been working hard and Cheryl's been working hard to, you know, make sure everything's all set for those days. And we've been kind of just you know, plugging away. Um, and then as far as um, we had a delivery from the state health department or uh, emergency, emergency management, I should say, where um, if we have food insecure families that are impacted by COVID in any way, we have um, non-perishable food boxes that we can have delivered to their homes. So um, just trying to work with different departments, letting them know that we have that available as a service if, if there is anyone in need. Um, Callan, is there a phone number that someone- that's pretty much it for me. What that? If, if someone is in need in our town, uh, who do they contact to get this food? So I did notify, um, you know, I did notify Cheryl from the school department because we have had, you know, cases that pop up that are food insecure families. Um, so the school nurses are aware that we have that available. I have also let uh, Kala at the senior center know, Joe at the veterans and Deanna um, know that we have that available if we need it. If So, I mean, they could really contact any department and we'd be able to help them, but they can also call the health department directly and we would be able to help them out. Yeah, I was thinking primarily uh, uh, seniors uh, in our town, there are more than 7,000 seniors, the number increases by uh, three to four people a day. And unfortunately, the last number that I've seen, 19% of all town seniors live in poverty. They live in abject poverty. And typically that is an elderly woman whose husband had uh, died or perhaps is, is divorced. So there certainly is a need out there and uh, I'm glad that the message is getting out that we're in a position to help and provide food. Uh, once again, Carolyn, good work. Uh, one of the, a question for you, Calvin. Uh, any problem uh, with the availability of, uh, of, of, of the vaccine? I know there had been a, a problem uh, for most of the last uh, 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 six, eight plus months. Um, how about now? Actually, it's not even six months, it's less than that. How about now? It seems like it's you know opened up a little bit more. I think when everything um, started rolling out, there was a lot of um you know interest and everyone was kind of jumping on and there wasn't a lot of supply but now that um you know we have that vaccine available every you know a fair amount of the population has been vaccinated it seems like i don't hear about it as much i guess mm -hmm. um i don't know if anyone hears differently but it seems to be that you know people are able to get appointments fairly easily are there any walk-in uh centers or clinics here in North Andover, for example, in Havel, the MVETS, you can just walk in, uh, register, and uh, get, a, uh, get a vaccine at that time. Don't have to call in advance, just do it. Uh, is there anything like that in North Andover? That I'm not sure of um, as far as directly in North Andover. I know um, someone's at the Greater Lawrence Family Health might have something like that, but I, from most of the, what I've heard is everything's been by appointment, but there could be something that I'm just not aware of. Yeah, Lawrence Journal at the, uh, I think it's the um, South Elementary School does have a walk-in option oh, available. They do. Oh. Um, your pharmacies here are better done by appointment, and then obviously the mass vaccination sites are walk-in uh, as well, I believe at this point. I think they have enough vaccine where the supply has surpassed the demand, whereas before, Months ago, there was the reverse, where the demand was so high and the vaccine was so limited. Um, and the so state, because the supply is appears to be there, do yep. people have any choice as to what they can get? Not at specific clinics. I believe certain clinics have certain types of vaccine, um, and that should be announced ahead of time. So if you know you are 16 years old, you can't get the Moderna, so you have to sign up for one of the clinics that has mm -hmm. Pfizer. And then the 12 to 15 age group that's now approved can only get Pfizer as well. So uh, when you sign up for a clinic online or find a clinic, it will tell you what vaccine they have so you know if you're eligible or not. 
I, I, I know that when, and, and Pfizer was the first vaccine that was approved, uh, but it had to be stored at a, uh, at a very low temperature. It was like minus 100 yeah, degrees green. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I have heard uh, from several people recently that, no, it, 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 it has to be stored at a low temperature, but not nearly that low. Do you have any, any feedback? I have none. No, no, I don't know anything about that. Do you, do you Ryan? I mean, I, I haven't heard that it can be. I haven't heard that they. I haven't read it. I just heard yeah. it from a couple of people. I, I didn't I, know I, if it was true or not. I've Patrick, not. how about you? Have you heard about that at all? I have not either. So for storage, it had to be ultra cold for storage, right? mm -hmm. but you have to thaw it to use it. And there's a window for thawing it. Um, I don't know if it's 30 days, but once you thaw it, it has to be used within X amount of days. I thought it was 30, but I'm not positive. That's not really what I. Have been working with lately um and then once the vial go ahead carolyn i was going to say there's three different options there's the ultra cold there's a normal freezer and then there's a refrigerator i don't remember what the normal freezer time frame was but i know if you put it in the refrigerator i believe it's five days it okay. can stay in the refrigerator so it goes mm -hmm. ultra cold to a freezer and then to a refrigerator and then into somebody's arm um and on Moderna, it's minus five to minus 25, I believe, is the frozen temperature range, which we have the capability of, which is why we had vaccine, the Moderna vaccine to begin with. And then once you thaw it out and puncture the vial, you have six hours mm -hmm. to use it for that vial. Is your question, if you go into a vaccination site, whether you have the choice between Moderna and Pfizer? Or yeah, that's, that was a question that I had. Uh, I, I, I don't know, that's why I, I asked. I don't know of any sites that have different that have multiple vaccine options. If you go to clinic A, they've got one vaccine. You go to clinic B, they may have another vaccine. So you have to check which clinic you're going to and which location, and they'll tell you. Interesting. So I maybe get a report, an update from uh, Dr. Tilson on what he's seeing out in the So I'm seeing I mean, there, are still, there are still cases in the hospital, but the uh, hospital cases are, are significantly lower. The, the, the hospitals in which I work are almost down, almost down to single digits in the hospital. Wow. And I haven't seen that since this pandemic started. Um, wow. uh, I haven't seen, Patrick, you would have, you would see pay case, you would see ICU cases. I, I know that in one of the hospitals I work, there's one patient in the ICU and Patrick, I don't know about Lawrence, whether, but how many, how many ICU cases are there, but they're, they're not many. This, I'm at, I'm at uh, Lawrence General this week in the ICU and there are zero COVID patients in the ICU. Wow. And same thing with Holy Family, too. Yeah. That's great to hear. So, yeah, so hospitalizations have really dropped, which is an effect of, obviously, the vaccination rates going up uh, and the immunity out there, and the case numbers is dropping. Yeah. Which yeah. Is what we've been hoping I, for for months. I track months. the numbers uh, varied ways daily. Certainly one way is, is the Boston Globe. And... Uh, uh, about 5% of the people that die right now in Massachusetts, and that's like 200 people a day, are dying from the, uh, from the, uh, from the virus. The number is, is, is typically around 10, perhaps a little more than that. So, so the deaths have really gone down a lot. As a matter of fact, if you take a look at the, at the age, people uh, that were dying before they were able to get the, the vaccine, the average age was 81. And it's gone down and down and down because, as you said, most of the elderly people mm -hmm. in Massachusetts have been vaccinated. As of yeah. today, the number was down to uh, to 55 years old. Mm -hmm. So a, a tremendous amount of uh, of progress is is, is being is, is being made. Um, still a ways to go, but she says things look real good. They yeah, look, they, absolutely. They, they look terrific. Right. Uh, uh, Patrick, do you have anything else you want to comment on, uh, 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 Max, uh, 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 Daphne, or uh, uh, Michelle, on this uh, on this virus? I don't have anything else. When do you feel hurting will be in place? Uh, we could be there right now. Uh, well, I think we're we're getting certainly close. I mean, I, with the with the percentage that with the percentages you're talking about, with 95 percent of these of, of the really at risk people being immunized, that, that's incredible. That is incredible. Yeah. That's extraordinary. Um, I think you still have a, a, a lower age group of pay, of people the way you were just describing that had 10 to 25 percent immunization, and so those are still 
possible uh, sources of or reservoirs of, of infection. So even though you're unlikely to get a, a very significant disease from the virus if you get exposed and you're immunized, until you have lost your, your potential pool of infected people, you still have a potential for this virus to simmer around and develop resistant or develop kinds of virus that then may be either uh, more dangerous or more virulent. So it's really quite important that people who are younger and are eligible for this vaccine get it as well for that reason. Now in Massachusetts, it's, oh, I think it's around 670,000 people and our population is a seven million basically in Massachusetts. About 670,000 people have already come down with the virus. Yep. So a question is, and, 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 and I'm asked questions like this. Well, if you come down with the virus, do you have to be vaccinated? And a lot of people say no, but I'm most comfortable hearing from our two doctors because you <laughs> both are front line. So can you comment on that? If you've been, if you've been, if, if, if you've had the virus, do you have to be vaccinated? Let me yes. start with you, you yes. first. Immune, from what we know about the effectiveness of the vaccines, um, it seems that the vaccines may be more effective than native infection. Um, so yes, the current guidelines suggest that if you've had the, if you've been infected previously, the vaccine gives you added protection against reinfection from the virus. Patrick, do you have anything to add to that? So the coronavirus has been long studied, and uh, one of the studies basically are saying that the human body just doesn't generate as well and a robust immune response uh, to coronavirus infections as, so that's why we're more and more promoting the vaccine for everybody to get vaccinated, even if you've had uh, a COVID infection um, in the past. Another question I've been asked is, is, is how long is this vaccine uh, good for? You know, like I read articles in different papers and magazines, and often they're written by people that are not in the medical field. Uh, I, I certainly don't know. It appears that it's going to be good for at least six months. Six months from now, they may say, well, it's another six months or a year. Again, I'm asking, not telling, because I don't know. Can you comment on that? No, I don't know, because I don't think anybody knows. I don't, we haven't had this vaccine around long enough to yeah. know. It appears, that the, it appears that the protection lasts for at least six to eight months, at least, uh, perhaps longer. Nobody really knows. I mean, the initial studies of people who, are in, who were uh, immunized in the clinical trials have shown that the, uh, uh, that the durable immunity lasts for quite a long time. Um, like anything, I'm, it's not, I would not be shocked or surprised if you need a booster, and, and my guess is you'll need a, a yearly um, vaccine or yearly immunization, similar to the way we get the flu, in case there are new new variants that come up that you need added protection to, or you need to get a little booster. But um, from what it, from what it appears, the immunization and, and the immunity lasts for a long time. If there's a booster shot, uh, is the technology there right now to combine uh, flu and the virus one shot? Or are we still away from that? So I know that that's been talked about. Patrick, I haven't, I haven't seen whether that's yet feasible, but I know that that's the goal. Patrick, I agree. I'm sure some pharmaceutical company will create the, uh, the combo vaccine. I haven't heard anything specific, but it kind of makes sense. Anything else? Then I open it up to- uh, Can I read? Yeah. Go ahead. Can I revisit the minutes? Absolutely. <laughs> I I had a chance to go back. I think I, it was just the date that had messed me up because we did it so long ago. Uh, but the minutes are reviewed and edited and approved for a motion. Okay, you make the motion? I do. I uh, make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second it. Those in favor say aye. 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 The meetings, uh, 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 the, the minutes. minutes of the meeting, March 25th, uh, have been approved. Um, if we're done with the discussion on the on the virus, uh, I'd like to take us a couple of minutes uh, to uh, talk about uh, Lyme disease. Now. If the weather's good, I, I usually walk around the old downtown section. 
and I walk for an hour, and some, sometimes two hours. And often, when I'm walking, the, particularly the last couple of weeks, because the weather's been, with a few exceptions, terrific, there are people that are just sitting on the grass with short pants, short sleeve shirts. Kids, some kids have just diapers on, and they're, and, and they're, and they're relaxing. And, and, and I feel like going over there and saying, no, 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 ticks, you can't do this. You might come down with, with Lyme disease. So just a couple of uh, statistics on, uh, on, on dead ticks and uh, Lyme disease in any one uh, interject at any time, uh, if I'm off the mark here. Uh, but not all dead ticks are infected with the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. And ticks can be infected if they feed on mice or other mammals that are infected. The disease can be spread when an infected tick bites a person and stays attached to the person. Uh, the temperature is warming, and certainly when the temperature is above 32 degrees, uh, the ticks are out. They're out there now. And if, say, you brush against a, uh, a blade of grass or pick up leaves, a tick can crawl on you. And the ticks, they're not like mosquitoes. The mosquitoes are felt, are spelt, you know, you, 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 but you can, you can hear them. You can, you, you can see them. You can certainly feel their bites but not the tick. You, and uh, so when you're outside, uh, they say wear light-colored clothes and use an insect repellent such as, uh, such as DEET. Now, again, I own a small farm in North Andover, and even in the summertime, I wear long sleeve shirts and, uh, and, and, and pants, and I spray myself outside because I've had all kinds of physiological problems in the past. And I just don't want to come down with, uh, with Lyme disease. So um, it's, it's, it's prudent to protect yourself. Now, the symptoms of Lyme disease, fever, chills, headache, fatigue, muscle and joint ache, swollen lymph nodes, and a characteristic skin rash. Usually it's like a, a, a red bullseye. Uh, later symptoms of untreated Lyme disease are more complex and can affect the heart. Uh, about 30,000 people in our country are diagnosed with Lyme disease every year, and it is felt that m many more have it but have not been diagnosed. Uh, Lyme disease deaths are rare, but they're not improbable. Uh, I know so many people who have been sickened by this, uh, by this ailment, by this disease. And in plain English, it, it ain't pleasant. Uh, so just be careful when, uh, when you're outside and uh, uh, on the grass in the summertime. And, and watch the little kids. Watch the little ones. Uh, because you, you only have one shot in life to die, and you certainly don't want to lose it by being bitten by... Uh, uh, by by a tick. Way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to lose it by be, <clears throat> being bitten by a tick mm. that has uh, has Lyme disease. So, any questions? Any further info? Well, I mean, on, I, I remember that. I remember that um, when I used to coach soccer here, I would always, I would tell the kids if the ball went into the woods, just forget it because I want you to go. I want you to get Lyme disease on my watch. What what is the board of health of the town's um, stance on spraying for ticks? On, in sports fields and things like that. We do have a program, and I'm going to turn it over to Brian to talk well, about it. Well, we have a mosquito program. Mm -hmm. Mosquito and ticks are two different programs. We don't have a, Lyme, a tick spraying program at this point. Um, it's two completely different animals, two completely different ways of uh, treatment, and mosquitoes are a lot easier, and there's a lot less um, pesticide that you have to use in terms of... Uh, knocking down the numbers, ticks is completely different. Um, and the habitats are completely different too. Like where they stay and where they live is night and day, no pun intended. Yeah. Um, but ticks, if you get bitten by a tick, it's gonna take you 24 to 48 hours to get the bacteria transmitted into your bloodstream. 
A mosquito is two seconds. So there's completely different ways to prevent it. So if you do a tick check, if you're cautious about it, and you know when you go into a tick environment to do a tick check when you get back. So if you go hiking, you know when you come out of the woods, do a tick check. Ticks are, are bigger, you can see them, you can sometimes feel them, and you can pull them off. So there is no current program to spray for ticks just because of the nature of the beast. Will the mosquito spray kill a tick if a tick no. is in that area? No. It will not? No. Nope. Interesting. Yep. Interesting. Now I know every year, uh, the uh, what is that mosquito agency called? Northeast Mosquito Control? Northeast Mosquito Control and Wetlands Management District. Okay. And they, get, they give a presentation to us. Uh, and uh, when the weather gets warmer, we track uh, a, a town and regional and, uh, and state and national uh, numbers, uh, Eastern Equine Encephalitis, West Nile disease. And because, you know, again, you can see the tick and you can certainly feel, uh, you, see, you see the mosquito and certainly feel, feel, feel their bite. A l most of the time and effort and energy and money that we spend is addressed to the mosquito, mm -hmm. not the tick. But not that many people die of West Nile disease and Eastern Equine, and uh, Eastern Equine Encephalitis, whereas the tick is 30,000 minimum. It, it may be several times that people come down with Lyme disease a year. So I've said in many meetings over the, over the years as a member of our Board of Health, we, we, should, we should focus more on, on ticks too because they're really nasty. I, I know that when, when I work outside, I, I love working, I love getting dirty. And, uh, and, and, and when I come in the house, I just put all my clothes in the, that I wear outside in the, in the wash machine, hot water, and then I take a shower and I check myself. Uh, and uh, and, uh, yeah, and knock on wood, it's been, been okay. So Lyme far. disease is treatable, Tripoli is not. So I think that's one of the biggest differences too is if you catch the tick on you and you can get it tested and you can get a prescription and get antibiotics and take care of Lyme disease. Triple E and West Nile virus, you can't. It's a virus versus a bacteria. Um, and the results of Triple E are debilitating, whereas if you catch Lyme early, I think you're all set. Correct? That's correct. Yeah. yeah, but the numbers, uh, not that <clears throat> many people come down with Triple E or, or West Nile. In certain areas when certain breeds of mosquito what are we more have prevalent. Here last year in North Andover? Okay. We're on the third year yeah, of our three year cycle. Um, last spring and summer were completely different because of all the restrictions in place and things were closed and there was no sports and mm -hmm. there was a lot less outside uh, activity last year. But typically it's on a three year cycle. This is the third year and that's a guess in it. But it goes in up waves. It goes up and down. We should be on a downswing of our Triple E cycle at this point, but nobody can tell and predict. Uh, so we do have mosquito control going on again this year. And the habitat that they can get to and manage, catch basins and things like that that are all over the town, you can manage and you can take care of ahead of time with larviciding. Um, whereas ticks is all in the forest, they're under leaf cover. Whereas mosquitoes, the spraying that we do attacks the mosquito while it's in the air only. The chemical they use is so ultra low and it's so fine that as soon as it hits something organic, like a leaf or water, it breaks down into its natural components. So it doesn't harm anything. Well, it does bees and flying insects, yes. Um, so beehives are in danger from this chemical, but bees are not nocturnal, mosquitoes are. So they do the spraying at night, which targets the mosquito population and not your honeybees or hornets or other bees. So, hmm. sound good? Great. Sounds All right. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, are we off of Tripoli and I'm good six now? Yeah. Okay. Any other comments on anything? Patrick, Michelle, Daphne? No, none on my end. Good. Uh, one last thing. Um, Stephen had mentioned we did hire a part-time temporary health inspector. Her name is Laura Vlasic. 
Uh, she's been in the region for years. I've known her for a long time. She's got a lot of experience. She's hopped on board to help us out temporarily with the backlog of work that we've had for the past year that we've kind of pushed off to the side is now coming back as well as septic, housing, food, oh. general complaints, things like that. So we brought her on board. I need the board to appoint her as an agent of the board so she can act on your behalf and do inspections with the health department. So I need a motion to appoint Laura Vlasic as an agent of the board, a second and a vote. I'll make that motion. Does he have a second? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those aye. opposed say no. Then she is appointed. Perfect. Good. Is she going to be working uh, uh, from home or is she going to be working out of town hall here? She'll be working here and as well as home. So back and forth. So I can give her um, a list of inspections. She'll come up and do the inspections, do the paperwork. She has a spot in our office downstairs, computer, phone, everything. So she can come in, get access to our office supplies, us, and we'll meet on a regular basis and go over what she's seeing and uh, give her projects and tasks. So to be here and working on the field. And I have one more comment, and after that, if there are no more comments, someone can make a motion to adjourn. But uh, Brian, tell us what's going on in uh, in Town Hall right now, because Town Hall has been, uh, well, no one could go in Town Hall for the better part of this past year, and now it's open. So if you want to go into Town Hall, take us through what you have to do and uh, Come on down to Town Hall. We are open. Uh, we're open Monday through Thursday at this point. Um, you come down to Town Hall, come in the front door. There's a greeter there that's going to sign you in. We're keeping a um, list of who comes to Town Hall for if there's ever any issues or um, COVID positive employees, then we'll know who they came in contact with. So we'll take your name and number. You'll be escorted to the department that you're going to go and see. You can do your business at Town Hall, and then you walk out through the side door by the Senior Center. So there's one way flow through Town Hall, but we are here, we are open, and people are coming in to do business. So it's similar to like going into a hospital, for example, mm -hmm. and, and some, some restaurants. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Other comments? And we need a motion. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All aye. those aye. aye. All those opposed say no. Meeting's adjourned. Aye.